down in the Western Cape, actually Cape Town. You can see the sea behind me over there and across that way Camps Bay all the way to Hout Bay and if I swing around you'll see Lion's Head behind me. But this is Cape Town in winter so unfortunately you're not getting the best of everything over here are you? But I can't choose when I come down. I can sometimes choose what I drive when I'm down and or often chooses me when I'm down here. So what exactly are we having up oh, Mahindra it's the latest facelifted version of the Mahindra XUV 300 there shall we say mid-size crossover SUV in their range typical body styling of a crossover SUV isn't it but it's got some pretty neat lines you can see over here very importantly nice daytime running lights running down below You'll see the headlights and to the fog lights at the bottom. There are projection headlights on this top W8 spec version because that's how they signify their models in the range. You get from W4 being the base version up to W8. And that's what we have right here. You can see, of course, the low lip spoiler at the front over there, the skid plate or whatever you want to call it. But I think you get the impression. You've got nice mag wheels over here. They look the part. They're pretty nice. And of course, you do get the expected cladding around the wheel arch and all the way along the bottom of the bodywork over there. And that's the cladding you'd expect on any crossover SUV. Roof racks on top as well which, as we all know, probably are totally impractical and doubtful they can carry any weight. But that's what they are and that's what you expect. Interesting blacked out treatment on the C pillar over here to give you a nice effect. And remembering that the front seat, as always the driver's seat, would be set for myself. You can see pretty good legroom in the back over here. It looks pretty neat, pretty good. My, one thing that does stand out immediately to me is the fact there are no USBs in the back. Mm. Well, today's world, I can see some kids being a little bit upset about that little fact, or lack, can I call it. Top model also now, since the recent facelift, has black leather interior. Remember, of course, that the previous ones had the light colored creamy colored leather on the interior and lots of south africans in particular weren't very happy with that felt it was not practical well now you get black leather you get isofix in the rear so that's safe for the kiddies and you get the stitching etc everything you expect in this category of car let me simply put it as easily as that and just neat trim neat finish neat effects you come round to the back and you'll see of course again the skid plate over there which is in silver on W8 models to differentiate from the lower spec versions and there you can see tells you you do get a reverse camera as well pop open the boot and no they're not for drinking now they were from the mountain brewery where we went the other day and did some off-roading 4x4ing in Mahindra Bucky's, which is why I'm down in the Western Cape and now driving this car. The boot is pretty tiny. We know that it's been commented on, criticized. It's about 270 liters of boot space before you drop rear seats. But on the style of vehicle and the sizing, of course, it's always the question. Do you want rear seat space or boot space? One or the other very difficult to achieve both so you make your compromises there are two engine choices in the xuv 300 a 1.2 liter petrol or we're in the 1.5 liter diesel version 86 kilowatts a big 300 newton meters of torque and you feel that on the road and when driving and it does help and make quite a good difference w8 spec as well just for example does give you keyless locking and entry and the mirrors fold automatically when you lock the car interesting when you get in they don't automatically fold out you wait until you start the engine and they pop themselves out but i don't think that's a hardship or a problem in any way 
Let's have a look inside. Let's check it out on the road. Let's see what it's like. This is a slightly shorter test than usual because I am simply driving it while I'm down here for a couple of days, kindly provided by Mahindra South Africa as part of the trip down here. But I don't care if it's a bit cloudy and colder. Look where I am. And I think a lot of people may be somewhat jealous about where I am right now. Of course, WH Spec does also give you a couple of extra features like height adjustment on the driver's seat, which is a good feature and pretty useful. So keep that in mind. You may not get that on some of the lesser models. Driving along in the XUV300, I'm actually pretty impressed about how smooth it is, how comfortable it is. It's got a nice smooth ride. There's some bottles that may clink in the back. It's not the car, it's the bottles in the back. So don't take that as being an indication of anything wrong with the car or anything going on. The six-speed manual gearbox, smooth, comfortable, easy, light. All those features are what you want around town. The only thing is, fortunately, you can't see it now, but there's a button to the right of the steering wheel, which I remembered to press this time, which is to switch out that dreaded stop start. It is just, I've always not liked stop starts when it comes to a manual car. That with an auto they work, and with an auto I get it, and I understand how they work, but I just don't feel that they're totally suited to manual cars. And I've proven it again with this one because I've stalled the engine a couple of times while sitting at a robot. And it wasn't me. No, it was not me. I will not take blame for that one. Sorry, Mahindra, I'm blaming the car for it. Your stop-start system just needs a little bit of refining, I'd like to put it that way. But beyond that, as I say, the trade-off on this particular car, rear seat space instead of boot, I can live with. The comfort is nice. In the top WH spec, it's got all the luxury spec. It's got all the comfort. It's got seven airbags. It's got the safety. So it's got all those sort of features you want. And the value for money proposition is fantastic. And doesn't that make a difference in our world we're living in today? That you've got a great value for money proposition on a car. So I like that, of course. Overall, well, in its market segment, for the price, I think, Mahindra, you've done a nice job. And with the update, the facelift, whatever word you want to use for it, by changing to the dark interior, just that has made a big difference in my book. Jumping in behind the wheel as we always start off, you can see the instrumentation is basic but very neat and it tells you what you want. You've got your little TFT screen in the center over there and take a look. I haven't done a lot of mileage but I'm showing 16 kilometers per liter which is about six and a half liters per hundred. Now that's town driving. I don't even think I've done much freeway. It's really urban driving. I think that's a pretty good figure for a smaller diesel engine. I've got no complaints whatsoever about that. You can do your normal scrolling, etc. I'm not going to waste time going through any of it. It's not important. You've got cruise control, of course, over there. And on the side, you've got your volume, your phone, etc, etc. All very basic, very standard. Interesting, a little throwback to the previous version I mentioned with a very light colored and cream interior. This little panel over here, that's still got the same coloring as the earlier version, can I call it that? And that's a button that I've been pressing pretty much each time I get in the car. Because if you really want a complaint of mine about this particular car, I find the stop-start system not to my liking. Let's put it that way. It stalls on occasions. It just generally is not my favorite system, uh, my favorite stop-start. And I just switched off, quite honestly, and let it run as normal without using that. Very neat over here. You can see the sort of silvery, can I call them, almost chrome look to the buttons and all your buttons on the door panel, etc. Auto up down for the driver's window, which is a useful feature every time as well. 
Now you come across here as another change on the facelift, as I said, that was launched not very long ago. And you've got this nice nine inch touch screen over here. You can see you've got standard navigation on it as well. Now, a lot of people have been complaining that the responsiveness of the touch screen is not great. I must say, I'm not finding it too bad at all. And I'm not gonna quite go with that. It certainly seems to be fine, seems to be functional. You can see phone, Bluetooth, connectivity, and of course, navigation, as I mentioned. There you go, it's popping up on the screen and you saw how it loaded. So I don't think it's too bad at all. And usually, if you want to reset your trip meters, etc., you do it over here, not on the stalks or anywhere else. But you know what? Once you've got the car, if you own the car, it won't take you very long to work these sort of things out and get comfortable with it. You've got dual zone, automatic air conditioning over here. I found it pretty effective, no problem at all. Below that, you've got two USBs down there. But as I said, there are the only two USBs in the car. So you'll have to work that one out for yourself. They aren't in the back. And you've got a 12 volt below it. Now, over there, you can see where I've got the cover from my phone. That's your spot for your phone. But I think my phone's a pretty standard Samsung size. It doesn't quite fit in there. It's a little bit strange. You're going to have to work out a way to store your phone or something like that. I would like to have seen a slot that takes the phone as is, but you've got your Android Auto, etc. So anyway, not a problem. And over here, six-speed manual transmission. Interestingly, no automatic option in the Mahindra XUV 300 300 range in South Africa at the moment. Well, that's how it goes. You pay your money, you take your choices. I'm sure a lot of South Africans would like an automatic version. Apparently, there is a CVT available in India, but according to the Mahindra people I spoke to, they said it wasn't suited to South Africa. I don't know. I'm just commenting. And you've got a good old-fashioned manual handbrake over there. No complaint about that. I don't see any issue with it. And you've got a nice armrest and storage compartment down here as well. So it's got all what you would want and what you'd expect from a car over here. Neat fascia. You can see it looks pretty neat. One, more or less one level as well, just a slightly raised binnacle over there, but not a problem. But otherwise, obviously all plastic, but feels solid, feels quite good. Big feature, of course, because Mahindra have been making quite a bit of fuss of the fact that they have called this the safest car in Africa, because it has had the highest rating of cars tested for the South African market so far. Now, the W8 version comes with seven airbags. Lower one, W4 and W6 only come with two airbags. So keep that in mind when you're deciding which one you want. Another standard feature on W8 is a sunroof. Just the standard one, not a panoramic roof, but you either like them, hate them, want them, or don't want them. Entirely up to you. Well, interesting car, Mahindra being a left field choice, Indian brand, we know that, and uh, Indian quality, as far as I'm concerned, has certainly improved in leaps and bounds over the last couple of years, and I've got no issue there, so I can't comment about anything negative in that respect. To the market, it's always all about price, isn't it? Well, when you consider that you're getting all of this in this car, including a diesel, which is becoming more rare these days, as we all know, and you can have your own opinions on whether diesel is good bad, clean, dirty, or anything of that type. I leave that choice to you. And I tell you that this car retails right now at 33699. That's a pretty competitive price in today's world for a car of this size and especially of the spec. So that's something you need to decide on. And it's something that only you can make a choice, but it's got the features. It's got both luxury and safety and Decent space for a younger, smaller family, should we put it that way, even if the boot's a bit compromised. Also comes with a four-year, 60,000-kilometer service plan thrown into the deal as well. Certainly is still price competitive, and that's what it has to be to succeed in the market. And Mahindra are proving that point because their sales overall for the range have been at exceptionally high levels so far this year. Smooth, 
comfortable. I must say the gear shift itself, I found very nice and easy and light to operate, particularly in urban traffic conditions. So I've had no problems using a manual even around town as opposed to the automatics that I tend to drive a lot of the time. But obviously I drive what I have and what I have on test at any given time. I've never got an issue with that. But it certainly is a compelling proposition from a price point of view. And I think one has to view it in that way. Value for money. So important to most of us these days and that is so high on the list with this car. Check it out for yourself. The list of competitors is endless. I'm not going to go through them. You know or you can work out for yourself where the competitors come and stand. But don't ignore this one if you're certainly looking for value for your money. I think I'll end it with that. And as the time closes and draws to a close, for me and the XUV300 at the seafront, well, that's how life is. What more can I say? Except to tell you that from me, for Motor Matters, I'm Alan R. Don't know when I'll see the sea again, but I'll see you next time.